okay now we are going to talk about uh, uh, flag uh, another portion of our discussion which is the chemotaxis machinery uh, now uh, it is very very important for flagella to move according to the chemical responses because the bacterial uh, bacteria have to move from one place to another place and the importance of having flagella or making flagella like a motor is nothing but to maintain the movement of bacterial cell so this is our actual goal is to rotate uh, the flagella and finally move the cell from one place to another place so that is called the chemotaxis as uh, this movement is based on uh, the signal which is coming out by, by this by, by the type of chemicals now as we can see in this picture is the illustration of how chemotaxis machinery has been occurred so you can see this is a complex picture but don't uh, look at in this way so just think first of all this chemotaxis machinery of bacterial flagella depends on or divided into two different parts one part is uh, the controlling or, or, or the movement of flagella and second part is the sense adaptation so it is made up with these two parts one is uh, the movement of flagella and the second one is the sense adaptation so let's talk about the movement of flagella first uh, so this is the movement of a flagella and second one is the sense adaptation uh, so let's talk about this movement of flagella so what happens when a signal comes in which is here in this case aspartate uh, as a signal which is come uh, come in inside the in inner membrane of flagella where where the flagella start to assemble where the rotor of the flagella is placed as we can see there are uh, different arrangement of proteins are there for the signaling purposes we have the tar proteins which is a dimer uh, condition of the protein so it's a dimer of tar proteins and we have this w which is called chew by the way in all this case you can see y z b r all these proteins have the abbreviation of chE or Chemi uh, chemical uh, protein R, so CHE protein. So these are the CHE W protein, and we have a dimer of CHE A attached to this. So we have a complex of tar, CHE W, and dimer of CHE A proteins attached, uh, which, which is a primary receptor for the aspartate signal. Now, when they receive the signal, what happens? in very first situations when they receive this signal uh, in normal time now first thing I must tell you before beginning all this thing is that a bacterial flagella never stop or never uh, stop working so as it is a motor something it have to do all the time that means either it have to rotate or it have to run so it is rotating in some, uh, such a way that uh, the, it helps the bacterial cell to run that is happening very few times so when they need to chase when they need to take food but in other cases for uh, maintaining uh, the cell in, into the environment the bacterial flagellum has to uh, rotate in uh, up and down motion which is called the tumbling of bacterial flagella and this tumbling is important and without this bacterial flagella tumbling uh, the flagella bacteria cannot maintain itself in the environment they live in normally especially in the environment when they uh, have the watery content right so in this case most of the time they are making the tumbling all the time in fact but very rare occasions they have to move from one place to another place in those situations they will run in those situations they will receive this signal and run now what happens in this case when we produce the normal situations as we can see uh, uh, when the aspartate uh, uh, signal comes in and uh, this this CHUY molecule is there the CHUY is phosphorylated when CHUY protein is phosphorylated it becomes active and it will go uh, uh, attached to the motor and as well as, as soon as it attached to the motor the motor will start uh, functioning the run procedure it will only tumble so it will only maintain the balance so and the, at that situation okay and there is a protein inside the cell which is called CHZ which which converts this uh, which, which dephosphorylates this CHUY protein and thus uh, set back uh, this motor from their tumbling state towards the run state as we know now what happened in general situation as we can look in this picture when we have aspartate coming in then what happens is aspartate attached to that and it activates this total complex of CHE A, W and TAR it finally leads to activation of CHY and CHY is dephosphorylated by CHE Z and finally what happens the motor will start to run really really fast so this is the signal as we can say so we have a run and we have a tumbling 
so run and tumbling motion normal situation we always have this tumbling motion uh, I am extremely sorry for my extremely bad bad handwriting but whatever this tumbling motion is going on all the time but what happens whenever we have a signal coming out from the outer place and which uh, as a result of CHEZ which is defos which is phosphorylus CHEY finally turns on the state of the motor which helps the motor to run really really fast now this is the way how we can control in general situations when we have CHUY phosphorylated bind to the motor it stabilizes so if it binds to the motor it stabilizes only tumbling okay or if CHUY go and work to the motor it 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 helps this motor to run so that is the situation when you have lots of aspartate as a signaling this this signaling is happening when the uh, there is less aspartate that means there are less Z D to convert so the uh, CHUY and uh, attached to this uh, CHUY phosphorylated attached to the motor and that uh, in turn uh, helps uh, the motor to tumble only not for the run now we have to control this uh, sensing of uh, the chemi chemical uh, attachment now how they can sense this chemical attachment we have a s internal intracellular chemical process uh, as we can see here we have s adenosyl mo uh, S adenosyl methionine and they convert this S adenosyl methionine into methyl and S adenosyl homocysteine by CHER protein and by doing this they produces lots of the CH3 or methyl groups and what is uh, the importance of methyl group when you have lots of methyl group present inside the cell it will attach to the tar complex and make this tar complex extremely reactive when they make this tar complex extremely reactive as a result of it a, a small amount of aspartate can uh, carry on the signaling and can help uh, to run that so all the time if, if this methyl group bind to uh, the tar complex all the time then the cell will remain uh, in in the state of uh, cell will remain in the state of uh, the, the running state and this uh, this uh, flagella will move really really faster it helps the cell to run properly okay but uh, that is not necessary all the time because the cell do not always have to chase something the cell do not have to go for eating some food all the time so it will extremely loss of energy as we know to run this motor we need ATP as we can see here so it's, it, it, that will be the loss of energy all the time if uh, it is activated uh, all the time for in the super active form that means in, if, if the star complex always bound to the methyl group so we need some way we need some way to convert this methyl group and take this methyl group out from the star complex and how can the cell manage this the cell regulates this situation by the uh, the backward process which is mediated by this uh, another protein which is called CHEB as the CHEB it is uh, as you can see this is called adaptation of the signaling now CHEB uh, is uh, when the CHEB is phosphorylated then the phosphorylation of CHEB causes the uptake of uh, methyl group from the tar complex and to make another uh, alcohol which is CH3OH which is, which is a methanol the production of methanol by by this conversion and uh, that is why uh, and by using the CH, uh, CHEB uh, which helps to take uptake the CH3 from tar and makes methanol uh, helps uh, to to block uh, the cell uh, to be go all the time for at a state of super reactive so it prevents the cell to move on to the super reactive step state by cleaving this methyl group out from the star and making methyl alcohol methanol okay now this uh, CHEB, uh, the story of CHEB is very very simple. It is always uh, uh, it's an auto phosphorylation even going on between the CHEB and CHEB phosphorylated. So it is being phosphorylated and dephosphorylated all the time. And when it is being phosphorylated, then it uh, has grabbed the methyl group from the tar and make methanol. But uh, then it is again uh, dephosphorylated in its original form. So that's how they balance and they regulate uh, the signaling or the sense of signaling fr from the outer environment okay and that is really really important and that is nothing to do it uh, the movement of motor but th this is have to do it the economy of uh, of using ATP because ATP is a very very important ingredient inside the cell as we know ATP is the energy currency for a cell so the sensing along with this motor uh, uh, motor movement is important to maintain the balance between the chemotaxis uh, inside a bacterial cell okay now we'll uh, look at uh, an animation which so shows that now 
if we see this animation we can find now here we have aspartic acid which is coming as a signal we have tar complex CHEW and CHEA complex as it is binding it is the case CHEA mole molecules are coming and bound to that so we have make a complex of motor and it is in turn activate the CHUY and attach the phosphate group into the CHUY to make the CHUY phosphorylated which is the active form of CHUY and it is going on and it is go and attach with uh, uh, with the flagella uh, inside uh, the cytoplasm which stabilizes the SW state that means uh, the inhibition of the rotation it doesn't mean the inhibition of rotation but it means the inhibition of run now if CHZ comes in and dephosphorylate degrade the phosphate it will stabilize the op opposite state which is SSW which state means uh, the running of the flagella now what happens CHR uh, take the SAM uh, and uh, convert it into SH uh, SAH and produce the methyl as uh, you can see the uh, when the methyl group is produced and attached to the tar complex it will activate this tar uh, complex really really fine so it is acti it is activating the cell which is uh, into it is locking the cell into a very very hyper reactive state so this state will produce more and more CHUY phosphor uh, CHUY uh, phosph uh, phosphorylated and CHZ comes in and dephosphorylates them that means flagella will be put on a very very running situation or the situation when the flagella will move really faster to run this bacterial cell but not always we need that because if we start if we ha um, always have to uh, we make the cell to run then it, it will be uh, not necessary for us uh, it will be very very loss of energy all the time when we when we start to run our motto right so that's why we need to have an adaptation complex in this case and that is provided by the CHEB as the CHEB always try to be phosphorylated and dephosphorylated the phosphorylated form of CHEB comes in it will grab the CH3 and, and make methanol and this methanol production in turn is, is going to block uh, uh, the hyper activation of tar complexes and as you can see this autophosphorylation events uh, are also being controlled by that so that's how this whole chemotaxis as as uh, as a combination of motor movement as well as the sense adaptation helps uh, the bacterial cells to move on uh, according to their environment sensing as well as tumbling as well as maintaining their balance in the environment and the run process okay so so now uh, in this part we'll talk about the evolution of bacterial <laughs> flagella okay and how a bacterial flagella probably can be uh, can be uh, we can say uh, ev evolved from the previous form to this particular form we will see so we have a background music here and uh, you have fewer narrations in this place but still it will help you to uh, notice that <laughs> 